Geometry selections are an integral part of driving 2D toolpaths and containing 3D toolpaths. So, in this product update video, I'd like to highlight some of the recent updates that we've made to the selection process and algorithm. For the purpose of demonstration, we'll highlight the enhancements using 2D operations. So let's get started by creating a 2D adaptive pocket. I can select my tool and move to the geometry tab where the selection process begins. I'm going to start by selecting a simple inside pocket. Upon selection, we see a nice preview showing where the tool is going to cut. The next enhancement I'd like to show you is what happens when we select an open pocket. In this case, the chain around the outside of the part. The algorithm has automatically identified where the stock is and is now cutting from the outside in. There's no longer a need to unselect that machine cavities checkbox. Of course, this algorithm continues to work as we select open pockets with one open face, two open faces, or multiple open faces. So let's go ahead and accept that toolpath and see how things look. That looks perfect. Exactly what we wanted, all contained within one operation. This same set of selection techniques applies if we're using a 2D pocket. To demonstrate, I'm simply going to create a derived operation to copy this tool and geometry selections over to a 2D pocket. As I move to the geometry tab, we'll see all of those selections preserved. And when I go ahead and create this tool path, we very quickly have a set of tool paths that are machining that same set of geometry. Using a 2D contour operation, I'd like to demonstrate how we handle open chains versus closed chains. To set the stage, I'll start by selecting this outside profile, which of course is a closed loop, and we can see that toolpath preview around the entire outside of the part. What becomes unique is when I select a chain that's open. The immediate preview shows me where that chain is going to be completed, and when I select, I get an open chain that made an intelligent decision when it got to the edge of the model. The same holds true if I'm selecting a single edge. The software is automatically identified which side of the chain the tool needs to be on, and also identified that this is an open loop that we're going to machine along. So let's go ahead and select OK to that. And I'd like to move on to showing you how we manipulate a selection when it doesn't do what we want it to do. So I'm going to go ahead and select 2D Contour again. From my tool library, I'll select a chamfer tool and we're now going to attempt to machine this chamfer on the bottom edge. As I'm beginning the selection process, we can see that the algorithm is coming to the Y intersection at the end of the part and making the assumption that we want to continue machining around the outside of the part. Now, most often this algorithm is going to make the correct decision, but of course there's times where you, the user, want to manipulate what the algorithm has decided. So let's go ahead and make this selection we're going to get a preview of the toolpath that's incorrect. We simply need to reselect that highlighted boundary and we move into an edit mode to manipulate what's actually taking place. At this point, we can start to hover over other sets of geometry to drive the chain in a different direction. Or we can simply say, this is now going to be an open contour. So by making that manipulation, I now have the geometry that I want to machine. I'll say OK, and we're very quickly machining the correct edge. I hope this brief product update video helps you better understand the new selection tools within Inventor HSM. For our HSM works and Fusion users out there, expect to see this same technology make it into your platforms as well.